I've been researching prehistoric Southwest pottery for many decades. And the one pottery type I always come back to that you just fall in love with are the Mimbres pottery vessels, the bowls. Because they illustrate life ways and mythologies and the stories and the legends of their time. And I've had the privilege, the extreme privilege, of being in the back rooms of the museums where all this stuff is stashed away. And I've examined not dozens of these vessels, but hundreds of them. And I've recorded the images. And we have everything from Coco Paley to Spider Grandmother and the Warrior Twins. And we have hundreds of them to show you, and I can't wait to get started. It's going to be a lot of fun. So hold on to your seat. Today we're going to talk about the rabbits. A lot of rabbits in Mimbre's art. Rabbits are associated with fertility and the moon. And we've got some wonderful examples. A pair of rabbits. Another rabbit. Another pair of rabbits. This one's on top of some sort of caterpillar for some reason. This is some association that we don't understand today, but it meant something then. Now here we saw these, these another pair of rabbits. These are rabbit throwing sticks. They're like a little boomerang and the uh, Pueblo Indians would throw these, the Mimbres would throw these and dispatch the rabbit. They're very much like a boomerang. They're a hunting weapon. This hunter here, he has a throwing stick. And this fellow here with a cut feather again. He has two throwing sticks. You often see pairs of rabbits. Usually it's four in Mimbres mythology, but here with rabbits you see pairs of rabbits. Now this is a really wonderful bowl. It just slides in backwards, I think. But this is a rabbit with this other object. Now remember, rabbits are associated with the moon or the night sky. Let me show you this image when it's cleaned up. Here it is. Here's the rabbit and this other object in the night sky. And what this is, if you count the little spikes, there are 23 little spikes. This is probably a representation of the Crab Nebula explosion that occurred uh, in 1054 AD in the Taurus system on July 2nd. Chinese observers uh, recorded this very accurately. This is probably a depiction of that Crab Nebula explosion because after the explosion, there, it looked like a little second sun up in the sky for 23 days. This little second sun was up in the sky. And this has 23 little spikes. Uh, this vessel has been interpreted as the only North Amer known North American depiction of the Crab Nebula explosion. I have another bowl that might also show it. Remember, the rabbit is the moon. See the arch of the shape of the rabbit, too, kind of indicates the moon shape. And fertility, don't forget fertility. Now here we have a rabbit being, well, you'll see other depictions, but being eaten by a bird of prey. This is un undoubtedly a depiction of the lunar eclipse, uh, when the moon appears to diminish in size and then come back. There's another depiction. There's, now remember, these are different bowls. There, there's so many of them that show this same story. And you'll see that over and over again in Mimbre's art. It's not just one woman painting the same story over and over again. These vessels were painted by different people, separated by hundreds of years sometimes. Another bird of prey eating the rabbit. This is the lunar eclipse. The Pueblo Indians saw, see, a, a rabbit in the moon, not a man in the moon. If you, look at the night, if you look at the moon carefully, you'll see a rabbit up there too, if you look. Another bird of prey eating the rabbit. And it's just his bones. Lunar eclipse. And this may be another crab nebula, this starry, here again, the rabbit is the moon. This guy has rabbit ears and a very strange snake-like tail. We see this quite a bit. I'll show you some more slides of this. This very strange tail on rabbits, or, or, or creatures with rabbit ears anyway. And this combined symbolism probably, it, I don't think it's Rebus principle, but it, and I don't really just think it's a mythological creature. I, I, I think it has a meaning the combination of these elements means something we don't understand today. Here's our Crab Nebula explosion again. But the one, this is the one I wanted to show you. The rabbit is associated with the moon. And there's also in the mythologies, Brother Elder, Brother Younger, in one story, Brother Younger is killed 
and is resurrected as the moon, even though the moon is usually a female. But then again, Brother Younger is often depicted as a female, so eh, it might work. Now, rabbits and fertility. This object we see all over the place. This is a fertility symbol. We often see it with Coco Paley. Uh, this has the penis, the male part, and the female part. It often has this zigzag pattern on the, sh on the staff or sword part. It looks like a sword. But it's a fertility symbol. And rabbits are associated with fertility. If you've ever raised rabbits, you understand why. Okay, here's this fertility staff again. Now here's a moth. This is very clearly a moth. There's these feather-like antenna. And there again, the fertility symbol, the fertility staff. And we see it again. Now this one's very interesting. A couple of quail perched on it. I don't know why. But this is the fertility staff. And there again, male part, female part. This is interesting. This is probably the embryo or conception. And I'll show you why I think that. I know everybody goes, how do you know that? I will show you why I think that. I have uh, depictions of babies in the womb. And they're always in white. And they're often uh, very round. And you often see the eyes and mouth on this and some of the other limbs. This is probably male, female, and this is probably conception, or a baby in the womb. And I'll show you how I know that. I don't have it in this sequence of slides, but we're looking at this fertility staff. Here are a couple copulating, and again, fertility staff. Now here's this round thing on it again, and it's filled in black, which probably means conception, probably means there's a living person there. More copulation, another copulation scene. This one's a rather violent one. Male figure, female figure, a whole procession of women. Oh, there's one man. There's a, there's a male figure, female figures. Their arms are linked. These might be captives. I actually have a slide of a, uh, uh, an auction where they're actually selling a female, a captive female. Uh, there's a legend in the mythologies of uh, a, a maiden who thwarts her attackers with a toothed vagina, and this might be what this is all about. The vagina area here has lots of these little spikes. Now here I'm showing this again because another copulation scene, and this, this we've seen this before. This is the healing ceremony. There's another healing ceremony going on up on top here. Here's the baby again, the shaman with the rattle, healing the baby, and there's the very distressed mother. The Mimbre's images we saw today were painted between 1000 A.D. and 1280 A.D. And if you want, there's a lot more of them, and we're going to have other, uh, other videos you can see, but if you want to get a copy of the book, Mimbre's Mythology, there's a lot of these images we're going to be showing. Uh, just email me, and the address is in the uh, description in this video. It's just kunkel uh, at hotmail.com. That's C-U-N-K-L-E. And just email me, and I'll, I'll sign a copy and make sure you get it. Thanks for watching today. Give me a like, if you like.